Hey, hey, everybody, Dia Davidson here. You know, so often we get to see the glory, but we don't know the story behind so many of our athletes from Pee Wee all the way up through professional. Joining me now today, Chase Menafield, and he is a businessman. He is an athlete. He is a very fine young man, and I thank you so very much. Your parents did a really, really good job with you and with Chanel. Thank you, dear. I'm happy to be on here and talking with you. Oh, same here. Chase, listen, you know, we all enjoy watching sports and we miss it. <laughs> we're, we're starting to kind of get back into the rhythm of it now because of COVID-19. But there's so much that goes into to it. It's not just showing up on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon or Monday, Monday night. Sort of talk to me a little bit about your journey. Um, because this was something, sort of the family business, if you will, athletics. Yeah. So, so did you feel a lot of pressure to go into athletics, or was this just something that you knew was going to be a part of who you were going to be? Um, I don't think I really would say I felt pressure. I would say more that, you know, what you see is is kind of what you, what you gravitate towards, and that's what I've seen a lot. Um, obviously, with my dad being a former – NFL player, um, seeing the memorabilia and, and stuff around the house, going to – I wasn't old enough to actually go to his games where I remember it, but, like, when he got recognized by, by Louisville and by Cleveland and things of that nature when I was, you know, 9, 10, 11, like, seeing those type of things, you know, makes you really, you know, it's something that you aspire to start doing. So I would say that, you know, just my surroundings um, – my mom was a lawyer. That never really enticed me. But uh, <laughs> but uh, the, the football and sports, I love playing sports. Um, and, you know, I just gravitate towards it. But it's so much more than that for you, isn't it? it it's, did you feel a sense of freedom when you were out there on the field? Because you didn't play just football. You played other sports, too, which is kind of a, a more of a norm than it is sort of outside of the norm for athletes to play multiple sports. But didn't you also yeah. feel a sense of, a freedom out there definitely, definitely. I, I would say freedom i would say um just joy love the team camaraderie um strategizing together to try to come to a greater goal um a lot of the things i use now in business is all sports related um with with coming up with the strategy putting in a plan executing the goals executing the plan to to then hit a goal um is all the same thing within sports so i would say just like the competitive nature that somebody else is preparing as hard as they can to try to do what they want to do to get their goal. But you also are trying to do what you can to get the same goal and seeing who comes out on top was really what, you know, I love to do and doing it with a group of people even makes it more fun. But it's a business. Yeah. Athletics is a business. It turns into a business quickly. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, sure. And many of the, the sports, all of them, I know all of them have uh, minority um, faces uh, on the teams, not so much in the front office, although they're trying to work more towards that. Yeah. But do you ever feel, or did you ever feel that there was, there was inequity? Did you ever feel, even though on the field, you may be a majority, did you still yeah. feel the pangs of minority? Um, I would say not in the space when I was playing, because you're just so like close to it. And, you know, I kind of use those terms when uh, I'm on my, when I'm running my business now is that like, you can't be too close to the chessboard to really make, ex to execute good moves. And I think while I was playing sports, you feel like you're so close to the chessboard, you don't really see the, the outside of it, uh, perspective of it. And you're just happy with the check that you're getting on a week to week basis. Um, so you don't really understand the, the, uh, how small of a, a piece you are to the owners and to the, into management and they just move people people in and out type of situation so um you know while I was playing I didn't really notice that and I would say that I was happy with what was going on with where I was at and you know there was a bigger picture to the game that you you know you probably should be a, a striding to own a team instead of playing for a team that type of situation um so being being the the players that actually generate the revenue you don't really understand that you're you're really just, um, you know, in my day and in, in what I do now, you're really you're really just one of the the people that are executing the day-to-day -day operations. 
you know, and not necessarily making the decisions to increase the business forward, um, which is where I try to be at now as a decision maker. Some friends of mine who, who play professional um, sports often would equate it to calling it modern day slavery. Would you use the same term? It definitely can be equated to that for sure. Um, you know, and I think that a lot of black people in America, a lot of the young black men in America, where they see that, you know, this is how some people have been able to gain some, some uh, significant amount of cash. Um, they'll chase it and they'll think there's no other way or another, nothing else that they can do. So I see that more in the, in the, the slavery, the slavery uh, comparison is the fact that, you know, in slavery, they couldn't do anything else. And that's kind of the, the thought process that they had, or that's, the, that's what was their actual reality. But in football, you have that same mentality, even though it's not your reality. You can do other things, but you feel like you can only do that thing. Because um, NFL so, stands for not for long, right? Yeah. So you feel like you got to cash out while you can and get the money while you can. And, you know, even with them going back to play right now, I don't think it's safe. I actually respect the people that are opting out of it um, to not play. But ultimately, the owners are just trying to get their check. And I think Odell Beckham Jr. just stated, like, he feels like they don't really care. That he feels un inhumane um, as far as, like, being treated like a person just because of, you know, there's not much protocol right now. And they're just basically trying to – NFL is just basically trying to position themselves for the – for them to make as much money as they can and not make zero dollars this year. Wow. <laughs> so talking about dollars, once the NFL, not for long, yeah. runs out, there's no real safety net. There's no real buffer um, for a lot of uh, young men, especially uh, in professional sports. Yeah. There seems to be also, it's not just financial, but sometimes emotional because they miss the cheering. They miss the, the adulation, they miss all of this. So where, what's there? What, what, what do you do? What do you suggest? What did you do in order to sort of bridge from being Chase Minifield to Chase Minifield? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Um, That's probably one of my hardest um, things I've had to deal with in my 31 years of living so far was transitioning out of sports. And I really had to get knocked down I would say, um, so uh, it was an interesting conversation. Uh, I remember my dad, uh, once I was cut from the Redskins, my dad, I was still waiting to play and I was working for him and he was like, you know, you might just want to move on. And I was like, move on. I don't understand why you want me to move on. He's like, if you think this is the only thing you can do, then these people are basically controlling your decisions and controlling your destiny and all these different types of things like that. And I was like, well, this is what you did. And I was like, so why can't I do it? And, you know, I didn't really understand that comparison as far as like, you know, I went to the University of Virginia. I went to Henry Clay High School. I went to the Lexington School. All these different education backgrounds to be more than a sports player, to be more than a, uh, a NFL player, and to have options in life, right, um, which we all have. But you said I got caught up in that mindset of, you know, this is what I do. This is how I make my biggest mark on this in this, in, in this world um, during my time on this earth. Um, and it was a hard transition. So I actually went to Canada for a little bit and got hurt in Canada. And I think that was really God's plan to just sit me down and understand like, all right, you, you obviously think you need this, but you really don't need this. So um, I would say my transition was extremely tough and it was a sit down, not a, not a step out um, of, of the NFL. Um, but I think that's like that for everybody. And I think that the story doesn't get told enough for the kids that are on the bottom of the roster. They're not for long kids who are, you know, really, really check to check. You know, it's not small checks to small checks. It's pretty decent sized checks, um, but check to check. And, you know, they necessarily are they're either training to get that next check or you're moving on. You know, there's no in between. You can't move on and think that you can go try out for a football team right one time and get another opportunity to stay for a couple weeks or something like that so the NFL is a revolving door at the bottom of the roster from 45 to 53 those last 10 kids on the roster it's a revolving door it's in and out every week and I don't think enough is said about how hard it is for those kids to really move on because they'll throw that cheese back out there and say hey uh we got another opportunity for you and it's not a, it's, it's, it's probably going to be maybe a week even if, if even if that right um, but you'll get a little bit of you'll get a little bit of cash, and they'll keep doing that over and over until it runs out. And then ultimately, you put yourself in a place where 
it's going to be hard for you to to really get traction in the real world post post playing because you kind of spend your wills for so long. So I was fortunate enough to to get an, a, a real serious injury where I tore my Achilles tendon and called it call it quits and officially moved on to business. <laughs> well, but you know what? That that's a blessing because so many you know are are dealing with the CTE and all of those concussion. Um, situations and, and issues. So um, that was a blessing that it was an Achilles, not a concussion type of yeah, injury. Yeah. You know, but you've also been blessed to have parents, both parents yeah. there in the home, your father especially being able to talk to you man to man about this, that some of your peers don't have the benefit of. Exactly. Talk to me about the power, the power of having your black father there for you. Oh, it's very strong. Um, and you know, like like a lot, like a, I'm blessed to have two strong leaders that have led me through my upbringing um, and education and life in general. Um, but like you said, not everybody has that opportunity. So I do encourage people to get mentors because that's what my dad has been to me as a mentor, um, and just you know, helping me skip potholes, even though I still hit some potholes because I'm hard-headed in some ways <laughs> for fashion, and I want to figure it out for myself. Um, but he, he tries his best to to keep me from avoiding potholes and guiding me down the roads that he probably hit already. Um, and my mom the same way. So I encourage everybody out there, and I do talk to young young Black men and, and young people in general to, to get mentors in whatever space that you want to get in, um, whether it's business, whether it's law or be a doctor like find somebody that can help you you know see down the road and you're helping to create um business opportunities for others under your model talk a little bit about your business yeah so um helping hands uh which is my logo on my shirt <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is you know we, we started off doing student housing and we're still doing student housing but this is currently our busiest season why you guys see me in the truck right now um because we, we do we work in the summer for student housing. So we are getting all the apartments and dorms back ready for the students to move into um, for the school year. So we're finishing up with UK at the moment and we got a couple other properties around UK as well that have student housing apartments where we, we're cleaning, moving, maintenance, you name it. We're painting, we're doing a lot of different things at, at multiple properties around the city. And I not only do it here in Lexington, but I do it around the country. So I, I created it like a, a regional partner but kind of like a franchise model system, which is a free franchise. That's why I call it a, a regional partner, um, where my former teammates actually do the same business in their area of the country. So we're not, right now we're working in LA, Austin, Texas, um, Philadelphia, Morgantown, West Virginia, Charlottesville, Virginia, um, and Lexington, Kentucky. So there's a lot of things moving at once at the moment for us. <laughs> Bravo. So you're keeping busy, huh? Just a yeah, little bit. Yeah, keep busy. <laughs> <laughs> never can be too busy right well mental health wise would say otherwise but you know. <laughs> where do you see yourself 20 years from now chase um 20 years from now you know i'm more of a day-to-day -day person but ultimately 20 years from now i want to be able to you know continue to impact and help um you know people that are coming in to have that same mindset that i had as far as you know sports is the only option sports is the only opportunity. I kind of want to promote entrepreneurship because I see a lot of similarities between entrepreneurship and playing sports. The same courage, the same confidence, the same um, character where you got to, you know, be disciplined, self-disciplined and waking up and training is the same thing in business, um, which same traits, different field. Um, we get, you know, we're still, we're still able to support ourselves in the same similar way. So that's my goal is to try to provide a soft landing into entrepreneurship. Um, and I would like to do that through hope, helping hands. But if there's any other form of fashion that we can do it in, I look forward to doing that as well. Wow. Well, we look forward to watching you into the future and to see your successes. Thank you, Chase, so very much. And thank you guys so very much for listening in on our conversation. To hear more of these conversations, be sure to follow all of the LEX18 social media platforms. Until next time, I'm Dia Davidson.